What's, What's up? up? This is Draco. And this is Alicia. And you're and now tuned in to OD, OD Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Period. Okay, first of all, I had recently expressed interest in wanting a pet cat, right? But due to the negative reaction from my social um, circle, I'm like, I don't got time for y'all being weird coming over my house. So I ain't gonna get it because it ain't even that deep to me anyway. So she was like, yeah, I got a cat. Um, She's having kittens, blah, blah, blah. She sent me a picture of the cat. Cat looks scruffy. I ain't gonna lie to you. But anyway, turns out it's not her pet cat. It's a stray cat that it's won't true. leave her porch. That cat got rabies. Didn't the gag is she be taking the cats to the to the vet? So the so if the cats speak English, Spanish, and French, then say that them pussy talks. The the cat speak homeless, <laughs> and that explain why the cat looks so scruffy. Oh. And it's not ugly. It's just not like a cat that I'll be like, oh, y'all look, I got a cat. It's like, is your cat okay? Does she get electrocuted? So you really want a cat? I do, but I don't. So I so I do not want any responsibilities for something staying alive besides my plants. And even that took some time. Now, I, if I get a cat, I want it to be, I don't know what the name of it is, but I know it's great and it's so nice looking. But it's just that People are so weird about cats. And I know that, I mean, this is my house. I do what I want to do. But I don't feel like having that conversation. Like, listen, is either you coming over or you not? I think that black people, we just don't, didn't, a lot of black people didn't grow up with cats in the house. So they. That's not an excuse. I know so many black but people black with cats. People, but, I mean, naturally, people are kind of like distant from. So things. don't get a rabbit. Don't get a, don't get a, a, a gerbil. A fairy. I know people with all these things. I know people with snakes. I mean, I hear you, but I don't like. I didn't grow up with a Lamborghini in my house. You think I'm scared of Lamborghinis? Okay. Exactly. The Lamborghini not gonna jump on your bed when you. Then they be like, "Ah, oh, cats mean. They don't need you." What you mean they mean? You know how many dogs don't chase people? And bit people. People don't got bit by hamsters, but y'all draw the line at cats. Bit by a hamster. At least you taking stuff too far now. Say so you so the fifth grade hamster ain't bit nobody. I ain't, I went in your class in fifth grade. It don't even matter. But I'm saying like I just be thinking like, <laughs> what did cats do to y'all? Like literally, oh they're evil. How? <sighs> the yard man don't need you, but you pay him to come cut the grass. Alicia, please. Come I'm on. saying <laughs> they don't even be having justifiable reasons. The only issue for me. It's fur. Like, I do not want to be cleaning up fur. Like, let me tell you, I just got back from back in my car, and oh, God, Sandy hair is still in my car. So, anyway, what you been up to, honey? Because you've been being around the world, and now, yeah, yeah. Hey. I can't do no makeup. I don't know where. I don't know why. <laughs> why? Why are you like Well, my true tone is. I haven't got no good today? sleep. Um, yeah. I've been ignoring a lot of people's texts today. because. <laughs> I really don't feel but like you've been outside though. Who you ignoring? Just people keep hitting me up about um doing makeup. I, I mean, I need a break. I be needing like a day or two for self care. So today and tomorrow is gonna be my self care day. I go back to work Thursday. Well, enjoy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, That's cool. So I see that Karen Silver makeup. How was that? Hi. <laughs> um, it was actually pretty cool. She's a really sweet person. She was talking to um. This guy, I don't even know his name. I follow him on Instagram, though. He was in her um, room, but he does, like, custom um, clothing out of, like, kind of like what Dapper Dan did. But he makes, like, utility vests, but he'll, like, cut up an old Louis bag or a new one and turn it into whatever. Like, he'll, he customizes stuff like that. Um, but he was just asking her a lot of questions, like, just what made her get started doing what she do and how did she get in the music industry and start working with those people? And she was just saying how, like, um, I don't know if you know her her story, but she was just saying yes, how- I know her story. She got on as an intern working for um um TV, and- right? Yeah, okay. working for Angie Martinez. Come on, hold on. First of all, Angie Martinez is the the blueprint. Period. So, Period. So I already know. I I love Karen Silver, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Maybe people who listen don't know. Yeah, but so she was just saying um. Her love for music started with the Backstreet Boys. She was like the biggest, 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 biggest Backstreet Boy fan. And so she ended up entering this contest and 
um, got on this show, I think it was a mm-hmm. show or something, yep. and she and she lost to another girl, but she was like, my website was way better than hers. Like, you know, and she she was saying how her website is still up to this day. Her backstreet her backstreet boy website is still active today, and she was just saying how like, you know, she hit them up trying mm-hmm. to figure out why she didn't win and all this other stuff and. It just opened some more doors. I think she ended up from that. She ended up getting like interned at some place. Then it just started there. But she was saying that she didn't even grow up listening to rap music because her parents wouldn't let her. She had first started listening to Tupac after he died. Her parents allowed her to listen to a few songs. But yeah, her she was just like she couldn't even really listen to Run DMC and all them people. Me either, because I wasn't born yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sorry. just playing. But yeah, um, but she was pretty, really nice. She said that she was going to book me again this Friday. So hopefully. Come on. So you booked her. She had you booked for Tiana Taylor's baby shower, right? Tiana Taylor had that baby the next day. That baby said, who day. having a party? Yeah, she had got a little too tight. Hey, it's all out. good. I want, yeah. Well, that's exciting. No, that's honestly, I really love Karen Silva. I really admire her and her professionalism, and she's Me just too. a really likable person. And that has been very consistent this the entire time. That I don't even know how I was first introduced mm-hmm. to her. I really have no freaking clue, but I know I have been very aware of her story and her tra- trajectory, and just seeing her in, in um like other social engagements and speaking events and stuff like that with other people. And I'm just like, this, this is that girl. Yeah, I love Karen Silva. I think I said it on um previous episode um that i would want to work with her and lala because those are like my favorite people Man, come on manifestation manifestation periana sequana and that's on who per it's glitter on my hand that's why i keep looking at it oh i didn't even know you was looking at it uh-huh. well um so let's go okay you got a black business of the week so for my black business of the week this week i'm going to shout out one of my really good friends and photographer um well one of my favorite photographers his real name is Raphael. Oh, surprisingly go. everybody thinks his name is cam yeah i didn't know either everybody thinks his name is cam. yeah uh but yeah Raphael, he, i've been working for, working with him for about three years he does a lot of different things he has his own studio which is located right in the west end yeah he's amazing he had he does like he did he does all my pictures like from my site so he's done like my personal pictures he's actually shot the freaking podcast cover that he did that was my first time meeting him yeah he shot a podcast cover so he does a lot of stuff he does um (laughs) beauty he does like beauty photos he does lifestyle stuff he actually does video which he doesn't really like to do Um, i didn't know he did video yeah he does video he don't really promote it um he does literally like hair campaigns clothing line shoots um yeah, he's really good. And he doesn't over edit, which I love. Like my stuff still looks natural. Yeah, so you can find he, he does have specials often too. So if you want to just get a shoot in with him, um uh, sometimes he has like fifty dollar specials, which is beyond cheap. Like especially for the quality of photos. And then he has a real studio. Like this ain't just no rinky ding. Like he is professional. Like yeah. you go in there, you be like, Oh, yeah. Oh, we about to take some pictures. Literally every <laughs> piece of equipment known to man for real. For photographers, he got it. Um, his Instagram is the Cam Killer, K-I-L-L-A. So it's C H E C A M K I L L A. If you need anything, graduation photos, um engagement shoots, you know, people have photo shoots for everything, all these type of things. I think that I'm gonna book him for um some family portraits i really want to do um i feel like we me and my sister and my niece and my nephew we never really take pictures together and i want us to get like i want it to be really 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 freaking glamorous like i want to hire like a designer to make them stuff get a hairstylist on the team that'll be nice so I want us to have you know take some really nice pictures but i haven't figured out how i'm gonna do it yet so we'll figure it out you know it's funny. You, I know you mentioned that people don't people think his name is Cam, and I wonder if it's because of Cam Kurt. Because it's like, why would yeah. if his if his name is the Cam Killer, why would we think he want to kill his name? <laughs> I guess you know how people say like, oh, he be killing them pictures. He probably had the Cam Killer. Like he, I guess, killed. So the his camera. name Camera. His name is Raphael. 
That's what I'm saying. Put some respect on Ralph, man. No, this was I actually like him. He do, you're right. He does a great job and he does specials all the time. Like to me, and my, like I feel like he is good for in excuse me, anybody's budget. Like literally, like Yeah. I don't even know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what I like the most is when we went to his studio, like, it was a real studio. Like, I just would have not, like, it's a lot of photographers these days, and this is no offense to anybody's obviously get it how you live, but they don't really have a workspace. It's, like, on site, which is cool. That's cool, too. But when you have the ability to, like, create a visual at one location, multiple different visuals, that's kind of iconic. I mean, think about, like, Harry's photography, Hollywood shots. You know what I'm saying? It's really yeah. top tier. I really want to. I miss Hollywood shots. No shade. I really wish. I'm gonna ask him because I really want want him to like find if he can find like backgrounds and shoot like that. Like with that. Like who glossy. did um light skin Keisha and Van Gogh pictures? I don't know. This wasn't like. I guess because I like the way green brass look. Like they had that like glow over it for real. Yeah, I know. I'm just I just know they had they had like redid. Or, I don't know. I don't. I think one of the popular Atlanta um photographers did it. But yeah, I think he that's a good black business. But um yeah, so that was my black business of the week, honey. What do you have for shop talk? Um, so the there's been some stuff going on on social media. Some dookie shaming going on. Um, oh my god, I've been talking about this all day. You know what's funny? I'm okay. So for those who don't know, so one of the young ladies who's actually ironically Chief Keith's baby's mother. Um, so her and her friends, or maybe it's just her friend. So Selena Powell and her friend have a show with No Jumper, which I didn't even know this was a reoccurring thing. I thought they were just featured on his show, um, which is hosted by Adam Twenty Two. Anyway, so they had the other girl. Wait, hold up, wasn't Selena Powell supposed to be one GP baby mama too? Anyway, it's just a lot. So anyway, there's a bunch of girls. They go on this show and they really just talk about their life, and they are pretty much popular for messing with celebrities exposing them just you know a bunch mm-hmm. of mess so the most these were the same girls who were part of the conversation about trey songs and um accused offset of getting pregnant and actually got caught up with snoop dogg you know just that one was a, a shocker but yeah, anyway that was, yeah that one made people be like oh so sometimes she don't be lying <laughs> or snoop dogg just didn't have the discernment but anyway she be like do she be lying at all because oh no right mm. i think yeah who knows i don't know but so her the girl she recently had on who's one of chief keys baby mother talks about a time that odell beckham jr asked her to doo-doo on him for lack of better terms and <laughs> people on social media just going crazy oh i don't believe it and then he went doing nothing like that first of all y'all don't know what people do let me tell you something nothing sexual shocks me nothing makes me be like ew because people, let me tell you something, when you getting coochie, when you have sex thrown at you, at your demand, you think you just want to be doing missionary all the time? No, you want to turn up the up the ante a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Throw a little razzle-dazzle in there or a little scatty waddy in her case. But yeah, so people calling her a liar, that they calling her ugly. And I'm just like, y'all, I don't know if she's telling the truth or not, but I am not surprised. So here's the thing. I don't care. I, I tell people this all the time. I, I really do try not to kink shame just because, you know, do you. Like, whatever you want to do, that's your, that's your business. That's I ain't got to do that. However, when it comes to bodily fluids like that, like freaking feces and piss, um, that just really kind of like puts my mind elsewhere you know what I'm saying because it's not even that I'm like oh my god that's so gross even though I do feel like it is nasty as fuck but I think more so just I try to find the root of it like at what point did you wake up and say hey like I want somebody to shit on me guess what he didn't wake up one day it was gradual but no you're right I do think the doo-doo thing is nasty and I would never want to be involved with that but I also know that people just like when you just think about it I mean and you don't have to think about it but you literally can have a different girl every night. At some point, like, are you really just wanting the the regular degular? You're just going to throw something out. Number one, these girls are probably also introducing stuff to him or celebrities in general. They never did because they want to be kept around. They want to just have some fun with, you know, throw some stank on it. <laughs> for oh, lack of better term. <laughs> but I, just, I do think it's nasty, but I also don't see what's wrong with it. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I don't, I just feel like you having sex, have fun, do what you want to do. I want you to bless me with your open mind. Yeah, I just because I'm just not that I, honestly, and I'm I can be honest. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I don't want to do it. I'm not, not into it. 
Yeah, I feel you. You're know, you not gonna it, openly be like, oh my gosh, you know, you're fucking gross. Like, I wouldn't tell nobody that just because they that's what they into, but I just I don't know. I I don't get it and it ain't for me to get. So Yeah, I feel you. I mean to me business. to me it's just like when people was so up up in arms about anal sex and they was up in arms about eating but they was even up in arms about just general oral sex. I just think it's funny that people think that people are just doing regular sex, vanilla sex. No. No, I think that I think that we're at a point now where everybody know that people are into what they're into. But when it comes to stuff like that, it's just like, whoa. Yeah, it didn't shock me. I didn't even flinch. I'm like, oh, okay. Let me see what else we have in the news. Um, so today in Kardashian news, um, we don't. First of all, we don't have <laughs> Kardashian news. I know, but okay, thank I know you. we have some people who. You know, a lot of people dislike them, and I get that some of our listeners may dislike them. But hey, we cover everything. Y'all can't get mad. This is on the new on the docket today, um, and I think it's it's crazy. Well, I ain't gonna say crazy, but it's, it's you know whatever. Anyway, keeping up with Kardashians after twenty seasons and fourteen years finally come to an end. Silver with Kim said that the next season will be premiering early twenty twenty one, and that will be their last season. Um. Also think this, I, this is no different from the doo-doo play yeah honestly i think this is good for them because i think that um especially with a lot of their uh like kanye's mental health being a part of like you know just being so open right now and he's saying certain things like when he said something about chris jenner and his wife and all sorts of stuff on Twitter, I feel like that has a lot to do with it and they have a lot of repairing to do behind the scenes. And I feel like it's also probably taking a toll on the kids too, just because their life is just always, you know, on TV as well. And, you know, I think they just want to fix their family. I feel like they got a lot of shit going on. I always had to do, do it in front of cameras by their choice, by their choice. Nobody's forcing them to do this. But I think like now they're just over it, which I get it. Courtney I, mean, I just it think it's the price of fame, right? The show was good and bad for them. So, you yeah. know, I think that just comes with anything being the public eye. They use it to their advantage. And they have all, I mean, it's 14 years. I mean, they have literally grown up in front of the camera. While the show is very yeah. boring to me, um, I think it has done a lot for them. And it's, and when they have antics during the off season, it gives people even another reason to watch the shows to see if they're going to talk about it. So I get it. I think it allows them to be, I mean, I just think that they're gonna pre- they're gonna appreciate more private time with their family. Like for yeah. it's, it's like, I mean, it's just a lot. I mean, fourteen years of the cameras following you. Do you even know your people like that? You gotta learn how to act in a normal setting. You got they probably gonna be acting like cameras is always on. I think Riley was saying that Candy does that. She always like she's so used to being in front of the camera, she be acting like the camera's still there. Mm. I can see that. Honestly, um, I'm not, a, I've never been, well, I ain't gonna say I've never been on TV, but I never. Yeah, we a, saw you on Love and Hip Hop. I never had a speaking role on TV. I never had a mic, mic on my body. Can't um, <laughs> you had a mic? Yeah. Oh, when I'm with the yeah. <laughs> um, I never had that. But I will say that um, just a lot of my way of do, doing shit and just being around certain things, I've just been accustomed to just acting a certain way or doing certain things because. I'll be at work all the time and it's, I have to, you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely feel people when they say like, when they go to work, they have to kind of like put on, not necessarily an act, but you just got to kind of like. Play the part. Play the part. You know what I'm saying? And see with me, I always just come into every situation just being like, just chill and respectful because I don't, you know, I have to read my client before I start saying certain things and getting too comfortable around them. But for the most part, especially when I'm working with people in the industry, I'm very quiet. Like, I don't say much. And I think that that's one of the main reasons why I always get booked again, because I'm not all over the place. I feel like I go on set sometimes with people and people just be all over the damn place. Like, the yeah, hairstylists well, just be wanting to take know how pictures to be normal. and yeah. do the most. You know what I'm saying? And they just talking about stuff that's probably irrelevant. Sometimes it'd be cool because, you know, those people are normal people and they want to be treated as such. But also you just have to remember that you don't know this person, you're in a professional environment and that can also hinder you from not getting, you know, future jobs because people talk about that stuff. Like, you don't know how many times I've gotten jobs from my peers and people that I know um, because of the way they acted 
you know what I'm saying, like the diva personality or how they interacted with um, the castmates, like is or, or whatever they do, you know, whatever we doing. So I just go like really chill and quiet until it's time to, you know, I feel it out. But all right, it makes so. sense. I mean, there's so many eyes on you, man. And like, if 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 everybody's acting like not not there's anything wrong with acting like a fan, but if everybody's acting like one, obviously they're gonna notice the person that is just being chill. Like you acting like you've been so before. But some people just exactly. can't contain themselves. Like sometimes when I'm out in public and I see a celebrity. And the way some people act, like I get if you're like a young teenager, like I know how I was over Bow Wow. But when I grew up, I grew up. And it's like now, I mean, I do get excited to see people, but it's like internal. I'm not like to me now, they're just another tax paying citizen just like me. They just are, you know, more visible. Yeah. But it's cool though. I, uh, of course, I love what I do. But okay. I'm not, when I come home, I literally be just, I have to just unwind, child. I'll be the girl. I don't know. I think that's another reason. Like, I'll be having to take, like, days off. Like, today's my day off, and tomorrow's my day off. I have to just start scheduling my own day off, days off, because just being around those, all those personalities and all those different people a day. Like, on Friday, I had nine clients, and Ooh, I had to go to... Jesus. For the baby shower? No, not that day. It was the day before that. Oh, I had okay. literally nine clients. So, imagine me having to deal with nine different people for, like, an hour individually. Oh Jesus! You know what I'm saying, and it's like I'm not. It's not that I'm not a people person, but especially when you got somebody that that deals with anxiety. That's adjusting nine times. It's just like different, yeah, different faces. You got different hats you got to wear. Yeah, and everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll get yeah. a businesswoman, you'll get a stripper, you'll get a club goer, a birthday party, uh, a lawyer, a judge, a, a singer, a rapper. Um. A, a famous politician i'm not politician but you know a like. scatter <laughs> sorry <laughs> whoops you, you literally take stuff too far like <laughs> dang i was off that and you brought it back i'm sorry sorry i had to go, I, I had to, go to the bathroom i was like i'll be back i'm going to make a video for Odell. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's so funny? Since he's likable, people just not gonna believe nothing nobody said about him. He got he didn't deny it. He keep making jokes about it. I know, but I'm saying that's the privilege he gets to have. Because if if that was Boosie, they would be like, "I know Boosie." Yeah, and and, and it's just since he's Flavor like Flav. very attractive and mm-hmm. he's can dance. The eye, people would be like, "No." But you know what? That happens a lot. That's actually pretty privilege. Like it sure is. I use pretty um, privilege when I go on job interviews. <laughs> it's pretty privileged like a lot of people would not expect like the first thing that come out of people my mouth like when somebody um who is attractive to the most and they get accused of stuff like rape and out and abuse they're like no he, he ain't do that i mean the, the, you like, people were saying like ain't no way odell even smashed the girl who said this i'm here to tell you now i've witnessed with my own two fucking eyes okay people do not get caught up in your looks because honestly, you can get whoever you want to get. Literally, I, and I'm a, and I'm a I'm a eyewitness, so you just you don't know, you do not know, just because you don't think that person is attractive or it's not something that you're into or they don't. And look the girl's like not that even perfect. that bad looking. It's like yeah, but listen, <laughs> that ain't got to do with that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, ugly yeah. people get wifed up husband up every day it's not even like you said it's not always about looks and sometimes people might not necessarily think you attractive but then they start getting to know you and then it don't even matter looks is just the first impression so um today (laughs) speaking of me doing uh want to do family portraits or family photos really soon um i wanted to talk about family okay so me and alicia both uh we both have two different we grew up we grew up in like the same but different as hell yeah you know what i'm saying so we both have our environments were the same environments were the same but we definitely grew up different so um even though we lived uh, together we did (laughs) Uh, um yeah i wanted to figure out well i wanted to ask the question if you felt like you were as close with your family as you should as you want to be or do you want to be closer to your family 
the, yes. In the yeah. So believe it or not, this is something that I have been making strides for, for the, like intentionally, I mean, it's been about five plus years now, but the last year has been the most progressive. So, um, so naturally growing up, me and my cousins have always been tight. Like as far as family goes, like I've always been super close. Those are like my siblings. And, um, um, but as far as my actual siblings, not really. So, okay. So um, for those who don't know, I, I grew up with a little brother in the same house as me. And if you see him, you would think I was lying. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> no, you would. We don't, we look nothing alike. We act nothing alike. We just took completely different life paths. And so when I show people him his picture and they're like, this your brother. Like it just shocks. So anyway, we're not close. We've never really been close. We went through a lot of stuff growing up. Um, a lot of things that he did to me or against me that kind of forced us apart. But even before then, this was a lot of mess. So and no, me. yeah. And you, right. Or anybody who came his way, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I really do wish. So I think for me, I wish that my little brother had taken a better life path because we would be closer. Cause when we do talk and we do have conversations, I'd be like, see, you know what I'm saying? Why you can't just, you know, do right. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's just life. Right. But, um, as far as my parents though, um, it's really weird. So I am not close to my mother or my father. Well, I'm not going to say my father anymore. Me and my father have made some, uh, some huge progress, a lot of progress. Okay. Um, so growing up, I was raised by my mother, but we always had a strained relationship. I think it's some stuff that she probably was dealing with that kind of got taken out on me and then me not wanting to really deal with those things anymore. So once I moved out, I really kind of extremely limited communications between her. Sometimes it bothers me, you know, cause I always think about, um, you know, like for example, with my dad growing up, he wasn't really in my life, but not necessarily at his fault. It was both of my parents fault. Both of them played a huge part in it. And so, um, I used to always just think to myself, like, if something happened to them, how would I feel? You know what I'm saying? Like, would I feel regretful or will I be grateful for the time that we had together or how would that be? But anyway, to um, not be talking all over the place. So for my mother, I have tried to, like, make our relationship better, but it is out of my control. So, yes, I do wish that we were closer, but I have accepted life for what it has given me. Now, for my daddy, yeah. I have actually confronted him with the issues that we've had or he's had as it involves me. And we talked it out and we got past it and we talk all the time now. And it's actually crazy because I used to really be like resentful against him because of some, the things that I was made to believe growing up. But after hearing his side of the story and knowing that that has to be true because of the things that I experienced, it, 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 ooh, it made things so much better. Oh my God. Like, because, um, like not to put too much my family because I think this will be a great conversation for me to have with my siblings that my daddy had so Mm -hmm. um but to add some color to the story my I am the only child of my dad's children that we know of that was not a result of his marriage so you know I was born outside the marriage or whatever the case is and so because of that that created drama between him and my mother and that was used as a wedge to keep him away from me and so, gotcha. you know, obviously growing up as time goes on, I, um, like I got this negative perception of him, like, okay, but why you ain't do more? But I also didn't realize what was going on in my own house. Okay. So anyway, so to make a long story short, me and my daddy are very, like we, we, I mean, he even freaking followed me on Instagram. That might not seem like a lot to people, but we wasn't even like texting. We wasn't doing nothing up until like, maybe up until like two years ago and it really yeah. ramped up this last holiday season because i had more questions for him like me and my sister literally sat him down and was like why we didn't get to see each other growing up but we asked him like all the hard questions and he, he he told us and i think that that conversation couldn't have had happened at any other time besides recently because he really had to come to terms with his actions and you know things that he played a part in and ruined in my life so oh well, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so for me, uh, it was I didn't mean to get all deep. I'm sorry, my I had a jacked up life. This episode. Okay, this I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know the de- the depth that we was gonna take, and I just kind of you know. Oh, I mean, honestly, you gotta you gotta have, you know, add, like you said, add some color to the story. You can't just give them give people like halfway stories, but don't give them too much because that's getting. Yeah, too I ain't know my Tierra Marie. I ain't have no daddy around when that was coming up. <laughs> so. For me, life was a little different. Like I grew up in the house of my mom. My dad, my dad died when I was little, so I never met him. Mm, I never or, knew that. Actually. Not from my 
knowledge. Like, you know, I, I don't have no memory of my dad at all. So my mom, we were really close. You know, I mean, it was just us two in the house. And I have one sibling, which is my sister, and she is 14 years older than me. So we have a huge age gap. So that already set us different because she's so much older than me and we have nothing to relate about besides having the same parent. And um, so we, she was very close to me when I was a kid because I was like her child. Like by the time I was old enough to even remember something, she was already 18, 19. So, you know, she would buy me stuff, would take me places, like come get me on the weekends because she moved out of my mom's house after she had her baby. Um, but she got pregnant with my nephew when I was four. And then, um, yeah, I was four when she got pregnant with my nephew. Oh, my God. My nose, Jesus. It's okay to cry, pool. No, it's something about those. It is itching. But, um, oh, gosh. Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, when I got older, like, my my nephews and my nieces, I mean, my nephew and my nieces are, like, my siblings because we weren't that far apart. Like, it doesn't feel like a nephew and uncle. Yeah, because you and Jacques might as well be the same age. Yeah. So it always felt like big brother, little brother, little sister, you know. Mm-hmm. So those are my ki- those are my siblings. But as I got older, like middle school, high school, my sister, like, drifted apart from me because I think that I personally think it was because she realized that I was gay. But she just, ne- you know, she, she would just always hate the fact that I was so different from the normal kids like I would ask the stuff that I would ask my mom for um like I remember one time I asked my mama for it was these things called old navy tech vests it was like the yeah. little, <gasps> that was that girl oh my god that was a movement yeah so I remember it started there that's so what that was fourth grade yeah so it sure I, was because I had one yeah I told my mama that I wanted the little tech vest from old navy and she, of course, is with it. So I wanted that, and I wanted me some pipe jeans, and I wanted some platforms, little platform shoes. And my sister is just so, she was just like, no, he needs some Jordans. He need this type of jean. And Trying this. to make you more masculine. Yeah, like she didn't want me, she was just like, that's weird. Like she never said nothing. She just was like, that's so like, that's what weird kids wear. Like, that's what... Da, 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 da. So she would just, like, make me feel bad for just liking stuff that was different. Like, even my, my mom always let me express myself growing up, like, how I wanted to. And my sister would come try to shut it down. Like... Yeah. You're not my mama. But anywho, <laughs> uh, as we got older, we just kind of, like, drifted apart from each other. So when my mom died, I was 18. And me and my sister had no choice but to kind of, like, come together. But it didn't work because it was forced. Like, Mm -hmm. we had to deal with each other. You know what I'm saying? I had to move in with her. And, you know, things just weren't that good. I mean, I was obviously lost for obvious reasons. But she just treated me so mean. Like, she just would do stuff that I just, I don't know. Like, I I never felt welcome. I never felt liked by her for real, for real. You know, and it was kind of sad because... I would go back and forth with her and it would make my niece cry. Like she would not want to see us arguing or just see yeah, us fighting. That's hard on a kid. Yeah. So I don't know. We drifted apart for like a little minute and then we got, we were came back close and then like 2015, 2016, something else happened. Um, and this one was really serious for me. Like it was like too serious And even though, like, after a while, we got over it because, and the only reason why we got over it was because I couldn't ignore her forever. It was my niece graduating from high school. That's our first child that's graduating from high school. So I had to do her makeup for prom, do her makeup for graduation, make sure she had all her stuff, you know, typical stuff. And I had to be around her. So that kind of, like, forced me to be around her, but I still wouldn't say nothing to her. I would just be around. But um, after a while, it just kind of, like, blew over. Mm-hmm. and we never got to talk about it and keep in mind this happened like four or five years ago at this point today mm-hmm. so we never really talked about it even to this day like we never brought up you know this situation and honestly I think that I'm over it like I'm definitely like I've, I'm past it but I think there's a part of me that still holds a grudge to her because of that because I just like when that happened. I just felt like she just really didn't fuck with me. Like that, like your own blood. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was messed up. No, I, I, and it's kind of like we all we got. Like, why would you do yeah. that? 
So yeah. it was just like a lot going on. So I think that me personally, I think I hold that grudge in the back of my head, even though we are closer. Um, I hold that grudge just because in my head, I'm like, what if that happens again? Or like, what if she, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would, up. yeah, like, I don't know. So, um, I don't know. I think about it all the time because I do feel bad because I feel like my nieces and my ne- my nephew um, notice the distance between us. And I feel like um, it's not really, we not, I'm, I wouldn't say distant for real. Like I'll call her if I have something going on to just let her know. Cause she always said I never updated her on my life or what's going on. I never check on her, but um, I don't know. I just don't like forced relationships with anybody I've never been like that like I've always been the type of person where like I can't really hide my feelings like I definitely wear my feelings on my face so if I don't like you or if you did something that really I don't really like I I can't help it I can't fake it like I, that's just me so me either that's something we got in common yeah I just can't like and it's and then I, I don't even I'll tr- I, even, ugh, I don't know like I'll try to do it but I can't so it's not that me and her relationship now is fake because it's not like I, I genuinely love my sister and I want us to be better. But I think that we would have a better relationship if we got to talk about that. And I just don't even know how to bring it up because at this point, I feel like it's old, like it happened, yeah. five years ago, you know, yeah. and I'm like, but it just I don't know. I feel like that's what's keeping us apart, you know. And then just my, that's just my immediate family, but with my, my mom's brothers and sisters and my cousins and stuff like that, um, growing up, we weren't close, close, like super, super duper close, but I was close with my cousins. Just like how you said, like we, I was, we fought though. I was always the soft cousin because I ain't never <laughs> talked and my cousins is hood and I, you know, even when we grew up in the hood, but we grew up in different parts of the hood. So I didn't speak the same verbiage as them. And of course they looking at me like, oh, he's just a goody two shoes, just da 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 But they would, I did, I still had some cousins that would like teach me the bad shit anyway. Like <laughs> they'll be like, you know. Yeah, they was a little, they was definitely a little more hood in there. Yeah, so. <laughs> Not even just them, my other cousins too. They oh, yeah, I just know the one with the, from the who are the dominoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, like I was just like, you know, maybe they're not that bad. Like I was close to them, but we used to fight all the time. Um, but I think as we got older, the only I only keep up with my family on Facebook, which sucks. Like I don't see my aunts that much. I don't see my nobody. So I said I do want to change that. Like I want to make it a priority that on holidays that I go see them. Mm-hmm. Um and I make strides to do that. Like this year was the first time I've seen my family since in like 4 years, 3 years. So I went to um two family functions this year. You know, it was good to see my family. I haven't seen my cousins in a long time. I ain't, I'm I got new cousins that I ain't even know about and they grown. Like Story of I'm my like, life. Oh, I'm over here, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Like, how, y'all just, how y'all just born grown? Yeah, like, I, it was, yeah. So, I, you know, I'm getting better with that. But I definitely want to work on becoming closer with them and my immediate family. Do you, um, do you think, so about your sister, because you know what, the thing with my daddy, it was something. So one day when I first made an attempt to um fix me and my daddy's relationship because I feel like my mama is just kind of something I just got to deal with there's no talking through those issues I tried but with my dad I didn't really know him well enough to be concerned about if he was open to a conversation so one night I had like wrote him this long letter and I was like I'm gonna send that like two o'clock in the morning so I you know so he can't see it to tomorrow this mf replied right away what he I was up. I was like, what here do? I was mad. I was not mad. I was just nervous. Like, have you ever sent a like long text or maybe express yourself and you were just scared to see the response? That'd be yeah. me. So I anyway. have anxiety about opening text messages. It's probably why I don't ever read my text. I don't know. I would just be expecting I don't know. That's a different story <laughs> for everybody. So know. yeah, I sent him that letter and it started us to get closer, but then it fell off again. And then I'm just like, F it, I don't care. And so I actually was at a point where I was going to cut off any relative that was from my daddy's side of the family because I just felt like to mm. me it's just gonna be and this was nothing personal but I didn't have a relationship with him you know outside of my sister okay so for those who don't know my mother just had two kids so me and my my brother and then my dad had three kids so yeah I have two brothers and a sister 
And so I didn't know any of them that well, except for my youngest brother on that side who had passed away um, yeah. in 2011. And so to me, I just didn't really have any attachments to anybody to feel like I was missing anything. Now, of course, I didn't really want to do that, but I just felt like, what am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. not about to force this. I've been going my whole life without these people being in my life. So like, I can just carry on. Now that's not healthy, but to me, it was just the only way I could really cope with that like absence. So anyway, um, I think I really feel like my, so my oldest brother has two kids who I, who I know I have, I have, and I really started to really build a relationship with them now, even now. Cause it's cause, um, he's married, he's got his own family. I don't see him as often, but when my sister had her first son, that really changed everything. Like it really did. Yeah. I think, and I don't even know how. But when she had Ethan, like I used, I just, I don't know. It just sparked something. And I just, I'm, I mean, I'm, I lived with them at one point when I was trying to buy a home. Like it just changed our whole relationship. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that because me and my sister always have conversations about like, man, what if we would have grew up together? Like she ended up being the only girl with two brothers. You know what I'm saying? So let's yeah. talk about like, what if we would have grew up together? We could have been doing each other's hair. could have been doing so many things. And I always think about it too, because they, even though we all grew up on the West side, believe it or not, we were miles away from each other. Like I literally stay in the same neighborhood as them and didn't know it but anyway we just talk about like the way i grew up was very i mean but if there was a below the poverty line that's what we were <laughs> they lived they lived you know they didn't they weren't rich but they definitely had a way more stable household yeah and so we just talk about stuff like that but anyways um but yeah i so i think that as far the only strained relationship that I have now that I wish were closer was just my brother and my mother and you know it's just something I just kind of got to deal with everybody don't you know it kind of bothers me I'm not gonna lie sometimes when I see people who have tight relationships with their parents and that doesn't not, that necessarily yeah. makes me jealous but I started like thinking like dang what if me and such and such was like not such and such <laughs> I almost said her nickname <laughs> uh -oh. uh, was like that but it's just not possible and some things you just can't force and it's just one of the things when you bring it up it's almost like ignoring it is much more, much better than addressing it and just having more drama. It's like, just let bygones be, be bygones. That's how I feel, but I feel like I can't let nothing, I can't let, I can't shake it. Yeah. Like, you know, my sister. But how would you, how would you approach it though? I don't know. And yeah. she can feel it too. Cause she's just like, dang, you know, I really wish we had a, you know, you would call me and we can talk and da, da, da. like she wants a better relationship. And I, I would want to start there, but it's like, do I just, attempt to just do that and make sure i talk to her all the time or do i talk about it and then let's move on past it because i mean that's the only thing i just need to know i need clarity on some things and you know yeah. i just i don't know i just don't feel 100 percent. so it's just really weird i don't know i know what you mean. it literally used to pain me to not being able to express myself to my daddy because at this point where i had wrote him this letter i was a functioning adult like i like there's nobody responsibility no more it's if i want a better relationship with him and i can't if i and i don't want to wait for him i had to say something and i it, it would be on my mind 24 7 so i don't know if it's similar to like how you feeling but maybe you should write it out i mean i don't even know because i know your sister she probably not she ain't even gonna read this <laughs> <laughs> she'll read it she, right. she she's definitely gotten better i think because the kids are older mm -hmm. and they pretty much all out the house they bubble back and forth like my niece is in school but yeah but see uh, even that could be awkward because now you gotta wait for her to read it and wait for her to respond it's kind of like you would think it would be maybe y'all should maybe y'all should have a day where y'all just hang out you know what i'm saying and then just find a way to bring it up and be thinking i don't know because like with my dad I feel like it was a conversation going on about him being more present for my nephews. And then it just turned into speaking of presence <laughs> where you was at between the years of got there and woo, 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 woo. but maybe if you can find some common ground, cause I don't, I, it's a tough conversation to have, but I think that until you have it, it's just going to be there. And maybe yeah. she can explain some things that can provide some insight and it won't, maybe you won't feel a certain way about it anymore. Maybe she might even say she grew from something and she might want to talk about it, you know, yeah. and she don't know what to say. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also feel like my family is looking at me as like the person to be the glue for our family because that was my mom's role. Like my mom was the oldest out of nine kids. So she would be the one to put together the events like barbecues, family outings, stuff like That's that. She's going to be was, me. I already know. She put it. She, she was that person. So now it's like, who's going to do it? And my sister keeps trying to put it on me. She's like, you know, you can actually cook and 
you're a good host and you know about stuff. I feel like you would, you know, be the good person to do that, which I don't mind. Um, but it's just all the time, all the like when I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Like, I wanna um I did, that's why that's a, one of the main reasons why I want a lot of space in my next place. Um, because I do want to kind of host stuff for my family, just have them come over for Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, something like that. That's I never, why I got this place and then here come COVID. Right. <laughs> But, Maybe um, you should have a game night. That's a good way to. You don't have to. You don't have to I'll be on the camera. Play. You know what? Well, they probably will. I remember we were younger. They used to play Monopoly, but that also was in 1995. So I mean, maybe it could be spades. It ain't got to be heads up and stuff. I don't know how to play that. I'm not playing. You ain't got to play. You can just have the space for them to play it. But I don't karaoke. Know. My, family, my family like to eat, so there food is just always gonna be our bonding. <laughs> yeah. Food, mu- f- food and music. Like, my family love outside gatherings, too. So, the park and barbecue and music. And, like, I have a cousin that's a DJ, so he always bring out his turntables and just... Oh, you know. period. Come on, just family vacation. I mean... Yeah, it'd be going <laughs> off. I wish that... um, Because I got, like, three different sides of family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, me too. Um, my sister... My, okay, so there's my mom's side of the family. Those are, like, my closest relatives who I'm close to the cousin that you know to all them yeah then i also have cousins i have family on another side of my um my mom i guess that's her my her her mom's side of the family but anywho literally night and day these folks don't even like you wouldn't even think that that's the same family really (laughs) so big like we have such a big family like i said my it's nine on this side and then on that side it's like i have like six aunts and one uncle on this side and they have so many kids so i have so many cousins and stuff on that side now they they do stuff like every i mean literally everything they have family like huge gathering so normally yeah. me and my sister just go there because you know it's already set up for us like they already all you need is bring your bring your appetite yeah like it's already set up like it's it's like we know to meet here at this time is very comfortable. Um, the conversations be flowing when it's time to eat, everybody gather around and you know what I'm saying? Just pray and talk. Da, da, da. So I, it feels like a family over there. My family on this side, I do appreciate it though, because it keep me, it, it remind me of my, my roots and just where I'm from. Like it's hood. Like, well, let me tell giving, you, it's my hood cousins, when they well, come up, we front walking. <laughs> It's not giving everybody to eat at the same time, and we gotta um, say what we thank for foreign hours and stuff. It's giving the food ready. No, that's that's the only way I know. You know, I do remember sometimes my family tried to go around a circle and um say what you're thankful for, but folks was like, "Man, come on, yeah, food gonna get cold." Do you um do you? Th- so I got two points I want to make. I hope I don't forget the second one. But do you think that the relationship? with your sister and your mother or the absence of your father and I don't mean absence obviously I know you say yeah, yeah. like just me him not being there but do you think it has had a negative impact on like who you have become or like things that you deal with um so I left out the third part of my family the third part of my family oh, my, is, bad. my the third part of my I only said that because it'll tie in with what I'm about to say mm-hmm. um the third part of my family is my sister's dad side. Now, even though we don't share the same dad, her dad side of the family embraced me like like I was their um, own. So I spent a lot of time like I was my sister's aunt's ring bearer in her wedding. Like, it was that deep, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. I used to be with them for a whole summer. That's that's good. That's really so, nice of them. Now, me growing up with out my dad and my mom and just my mom and my sister. All those people who I named, they all just made sure that I was safe. Like, they all made me feel comfortable and welcome. Like, I always felt like just, like, it was just my world. Like, just growing up with them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I didn't really, I think that that definitely got, has an impact on who I am today just because I I felt that love from my family. Um, I think that for the moment, you know, when I had my little slip up and I was, all over the place I think that that's probably what it was it was just that I was always used to having so many people around me showing love and embracing me even down to because my mom ended up putting me in the big brothers program when I was in I remember I was I wanted that so bad and that really that really like helped me because I was exposed to so much stuff like we would go 
on like he would just you know take me to things I ain't never seen before like I'm from Camerton Road like he used to come get me from Camerton Road and we would go like like I rode on a plane for the first time with him um I went whitewater rafting rode some roller coasters that I ain't never got on you know what I'm saying just That's little fine. Like that. so it's like a lot of different memories and just me having that much love around me was really just amazing so when my mom passed i just lost it like i didn't know what to do my sister i felt like halfway like me um and then like the only person who i was just comfortable around for real is gone so it was just like a lot for me so i think that does play a role in who i am today because i think that now i was way 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 like more open-minded when i was younger and i had more fun i think now i'm just so secluded and i shut everything out and shut people out so i really do feel like that does play a big part of like my like how I am today you know what I'm saying yeah. I'm not that close with my other family because like I said my mom was the one to hold that together so I will always be around them and I always see them because of my mom like I never it wasn't something I did on my own so now I gotta like flip it and make that important to me yeah you know? that's interesting I feel the same I feel so something I realized and this is no shade to no, neither one of my parents but I didn't really learn life skills growing up I just learned how to survive and so when it came to like and I don't know how I end up adapting so fast but there are some things that that come up and I'm just thinking like I just was a late bloomer per se I wish I had an example so I mean I guess I can use like home buying and buying and getting a car as an example I don't know that and I don't that sounds so like I mean honestly that's like that's like typical for people where that grew up where we grew up or grew up in the same environment that we did because we didn't know about that me personally i didn't i told you like i didn't i still it's some stuff now that i still just don't know for sure and i'd be like well this is this is the point that i'm making though i didn't really have anybody to lean on for advice on decision making in general like even little silly stuff like like getting stuff like stuff that my man does for me I be thinking like, now if I if I would have had my daddy around, this probably wouldn't be a concern. Or I've even had concerns with myself, like if I am even navigating my relationship appropriately, because I don't really, I've never ever ever gone to anybody for relationship advice. Like any issues that I have in my relationship, I mean, there have been situations where I've been like, "Girl, can you believe he did this?" But I don't really go to anybody for relationship advice, and I always wonder if I missed out on important like aspects or things to know about and thankfully I have I mean and this is not to brag I really do have a good man but in relations or situations I've been in before I always end up learning a lesson after something really bad has happened and I but some and somebody who would have you know a father and I know it's not just me but a a woman that would have a father can have a guy a father who's like who says the, the expectation for her like if I have a daddy who's in my life and he's doing these things, he's taking care of me, he's raising me, ain't no way I can go for a guy who's still out of Walmart. Yeah. Or or okay. be or, listen, or is disrespectful or or embarrass you and stuff like that. Like that's stuff that I wouldn't be going for. But I, I just used to wonder, and I think that I've done pretty well for myself for that lack. Like I've learned very quickly. But it have been multiple moments, even when I have car trouble, I'm just like, who in a who I'm gonna call? Who yeah. what am I supposed to do? Like, and I don't want ever be in a position where my boyfriend is the one doing those things. Like, I mean, I do want to be in a point where I have that, but I think that I would be less clueless if I had some of that like even like learning how to drive. Like, you know, I know we both went to drive in school, but that is something that a parent would want to teach their child or a father would want to help their child shop. I just kind of all of my decisions have been means of survival and not off of like my daddy taught me, my mama taught me and things like that. So yeah, yeah. I think it was, uh, I think there have been a lot of situations that have come up over the last few years and the way I've reacted to them to have shown me that I have um, been like kind of like a little PTSD from some stuff that happened, but I didn't even realize why I was acting that way or doing things a certain kind of way. It's just because of what I have experienced. And these are not some like second nature to you, so you don't really necessarily think nothing is wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. And then so somebody's like, Alicia, you need to like this is not healthy. Like this shouldn't trigger you to be like that. And I'm thinking like that you know somebody you know how for example some people um like some people have never dealt with depression. And sometimes people I don't, I mean, I think I've had like mild moments, but nothing like really diagnosable. But I think that some people who start to experience the depression are like, I never thought I'd be that person. So you don't even think about how stuff can impact you. But anyway, 
I just, I just want, I just feel like I missed some life lessons. And because of the, the issues that I had with my little brother who I grew up with, I didn't really, I didn't really know how to properly build friendships to be honest until college. Like I didn't really like, I didn't really, I just was, Oh, the people I used to hang with, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's just all bad. But even with my sister, like I, I told her, I think I told her before, this was some a long time ago, but I never could keep female friends. And it's not even personal, but I feel like I'm such so masculine in a lot of ways that a lot of girls irritate me. <laughs> I just be like, shut up. Like they be crying and emotional. It's masculine for me, girl. <laughs> I mean, not, I don't literally mean mess. I just think that I'm so careless about like carefree about stuff or things just don't bother me. Like I'm not really emotional. And a lot of the girls I have met, and I have a lot of female friends now I've matured from that. A lot of the girls that I've met just be crying and they just always care too much about stuff. And I'm like, girl, get over it. Like, let's go get some ice cream. I'd be thinking like, dang, I wonder if I had a sister, I'd be emotional too. If I had another girl around me. Cause I feel like I had to argue too much. I'm like, I don't got time to be worried about that. <laughs> Mm, um. Yeah, it was different for me. I f- I definitely have more feminine uh, sides. Oh, it's the feminine what? for me. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how the tables turn. For you. Turn. But growing up, I had a lot of female friends. I had some guy friends too in my neighborhood, but I had a lot of female friends. It's because I grew up with a lot of girls. Like my family is a, has a lot of women in it. Um, Mine too. Will I'm somebody better put out a little boy. We have a lot of women. We do have, it's so crazy. And all my cousins that are boys that for the most part, all of our birthday in May, we all are, are Tauruses, all of us. It's so crazy. But um, yeah, so I don't know. Like I definitely was more softer. Like I was so sensitive. Like I, it, would, it wouldn't take much for me to cry as a kid. Well, it don't, I don't, honey. I, I was I, so I, sensitive. Like I, I, I even think now sometimes I'll be like a little soft. I'm like, oh no, ma'am. But I don't know. <laughs> I ain't soft. Me. Honestly, my mom ain't soft either, to be honest. I mean, she's emotional, but she ain't. Oh, no- I never noticed. Uh, she definitely <laughs> has some 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 male tendencies, which is maybe that's where I got it from. But even then, because we never really had a tight mother-daughter relationship, I don't like it's stuff. I just be having my little wall be up. I don't got time. I'd be ready to, yeah. you know. I don't know, but okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what about your childhood? Besides the fact that your parents, um, that you want to be close to your parents, what about your childhood? Do you wish was different? Um, I just wish that we had more uh, financial stability. Really, I mean, yeah. I think that um, them, them broke times built character though. And that's another thing too, because I low key am glad I like. I feel like. I went through so much in the first half of my life that stuff do not, but life is not beating me up. Mm-hmm. It is not, honey. I'm, honey, it ain't nothing. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So I won't even say that. I, I, you know, it was miserable. Don't get me wrong, but I am glad that I went through that stuff at such a young age that my adulthood has been fabulous. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I have zero complaints. 10 out of 10 know, will recommend. what to do to prevent that from happening to you. Exactly. Like, yeah. a, that's that survival mode. So I really think, honestly, I think that I would have been, I, you know, I do wish, I wish that I would have known how to speak up for myself more. Like I just would just oh, kind of. I, I, I think I wish that about myself now. Really, and I, I mean it's something I've learned to work on now. I'm I'm in a much better position now, but I I have always avoided confrontation, like not in a like a bully scenario, but just things that's kind of like, honey, okay, whatever. I'm not even gonna worry about that and keep it moving because I always feel like it was bigger fish to fry. But I but there have been situations that I've been in, and instead of addressing it how I should have, I would just get past it mentally and just move on to the next but i wish that i would have you know just spoken up for myself more and really advocated for things that make me happy mm. but i did it so but now i do and i don't play them type of game y'all be hearing these stories i tell in this show i would never okay don't play with me ain't nobody playing with me the players ain't even playing with me per year <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think that just came with me being mature i'm telling you i swear to god living alone changed my mentality so much like yes. Just being in the house by yourself and just having time to think. And I used to always hear people say that, but that's when I really started to like develop my, like just my, I don't even know my best thoughts just happen for just laying on the bed, looking at the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I definitely enjoy my long time. I, 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 I'm a big, big believer in self-reflection and just, mm-hmm. you know, just trying to figure your life out. Um, I think I, I enjoy that the most. Like, I just love being alone and I love, like, I do, love doing all things alone, like going out to eat. Me too. Travel. Um, honey, I don't care. No, I haven't. I'm lying. I have traveled by myself, but it was in state though. I mean, in the United States. Like I so? went to, 
New York and LA by myself the first time I ever went. I went by myself and I just explored it and I don't regret it at all. Like I just that was fun. But something about my childhood that I wish was different. Um well for one, I wish my mom had more kids because <laughs> I was bored. <laughs> so <laughs> I used to always say that. Like, I'm like, damn, I wish I had some brothers and Your sisters. Your mom probably like, because she was a little bit older when she had you, but she probably like, I, I, yeah, I ain't doing nothing. My mama no had me at 36. Oh, that's all that ain't even, look, in my mind, that's my perfect. Mama, yeah, honestly, and I'm, listen, I tell people this all the time. I'm so grateful my mama had me at an older age because I feel like that made me a better person. Now, I'm no sure it made her a better person. Yeah, and I feel, I feel like, um, you know, no shade to nobody whose parents are young, but I do feel like when you have younger parents and they're not as experienced with life, that they are like Make literally figuring mistakes. out life with you. Yep, you growing so up together. Like, yeah, y'all are. Y'all growing up together. So um, things just be a little different. Like, that, you know what I'm saying? And, and those type of people, they don't, like, I notice that a lot of people who grow up with young parents, they don't know how to cook. <laughs> they don't know how to. And, and I just, it's a spaghetti it's, now. <laughs> yeah, it's like something I observe. Um, and me, on the other hand, my mom would cook, and my mom would have me in the kitchen. I would have to help her. Like, I would have to peel shrimp and peel corn and do what you know. And yeah, I had cook, to teach myself how to cook. I ain't gonna cook lie to greens you. and stuff. Like, my mama would teach me that. Like, my mama would show me that or tell me, oh, this is the good stuff. This is not good. Da, 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 da. Like, my mama definitely was that person that had me in the kitchen all the time. And think about it. Your mama, her firstborn child was an adult when she had you, right? Oh, she was, how old was she? Um, you say y'all fourteen years apart. Yeah, but but even still, she has like so now your sister probably going to the ninth grade that she's raised her basically at this point. So yeah. anything because I feel like some parents obviously when they have kids back to back they might do something differently with that second child. But your mother has seen Tamika up until this point up until from every phase of her life up until being an adult. Yeah. So it was just you know that was different. I'm trying to see like what would I have changed because I actually really appreciate how I grew up. Like even the good and the bad. It sucked while it was going on, but baby. Yeah, but it just gave me humility just because I knew what could happen and I knew how to deal with it. Just me watching my mama go through stuff and how she dealt with it and how she just dealt with it in like not necessarily silence, but she dealt with it with like a like a good spirit or at least like Like a mouse. She taught me a lot, though. I say that. I'm trying to see what I would change about my childhood. Like I said, I just I don't know. I would I would definitely want to want me to speak up more for myself because I feel like I was just like a little bit too quiet. Yeah, um, me too. And I also wish I would have. Um, I wish I would have just a being like a real artistic kid. Like I really feel like I used to paint at some time like it would be i'd paint and draw stuff and then stop for like three or four years and start back like i would i wish i was like consistent with that because if i wasn't a makeup artist i think that i would really want to be like um a painter but i think the proper term is a fine artist like that uh, would be my career I, I don't know that's how yeah. i feel about writing i used to really write i won awards for i mean i used to get all kinds of recognition but i didn't care enough about it but I, and one thing i have learned or life has taught me i guess from just knowing people is when kids have a talent or any spe- special skill you have to hone in on it because they don't really yeah. know what to do with it at that age you got to challenge them and keep them interested in it because otherwise it will get lost it's, it's just one of those things like you know how you be somebody can sing and you be shocked you'd be like what the you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, writing is something that has always found its way back to me. But I do think about like the what ifs if I would have just st- stuck to it, honestly. And I can do it about it now. But I'm just wondering what would happen. Yeah, you could have did. You could do something with it now. Don't say that. I can, but it's not there. The creativity. I used to be able to write and write and write and write. I mean, Jesus Christ. But now I don't even. You better put that pen down. What's wrong with you. Hmm. Huh. I'm trying to find these glasses. I'm going to find them. So one thing that one of my cousins has shown me that is important is knowing who your family is. So one thing that she's done, and people can obviously take the route they want to take, but we did the, um. not only did we do the ancestry DNA, but we actually built out our family tree on there. And we have found heritage and family that like questions, you know, when somebody passes away, they die with that knowledge, but we've been able to find out my great-great-grandparents, parents, people that were enslaved, 
documents referencing wow. them. I mean, just things that as time, as generations go by, it's going to be harder to find. I think that that's something really important. And it's for somebody that may not have the relationship with their family they wish to have, that could be a way to kind of paint a picture for you. Because obviously we, we don't know our true African roots because it's kind of impossible. And not even kind of, it is impossible now. But to be able to go back as far as possible and find names and see pictures who look from hundreds of years ago who look like your aunties and uncles now is crazy. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I wonder if I could find my family like that. Yeah, you can. So now I will say my cousin does pay for a special membership for hers, but the National Archive Center, which is right next to Clayton State, is free. And you can literally search the records and find pro- old property records, newspapers. I mean, anything. You just search the name. And thankfully for you, I mean, I think that your last name not necessarily common, but it's probably very specific. Like my last name, it's not a lot of black people last name Arnold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Research shows. Now I've been able to find people, but I think that, um, yeah, you probably, I'm pretty sure you could find, like, you could just say, it's probably gonna take some time, this like, maybe. Definitely a slave name, child. <laughs> but I think that's something really important, and I always think about, you know, if I have kids, and if I'm not, if I don't make it to the point where I can see them grow old, I want them to be able to go and see, like, wow, these are my people, and, because I'm not gonna remember these people's names, I'm not, I'm just gonna yeah. keep it real with you, but I want to be able to have, like, a time capsule they can go back and look into and, and get information you from. You like, JC, what are they is? What are they is? Let me tell you something. JC and Carisha oh. been in their MF and bad, baby. Yeah, they've been they looking look good. They've been looking good, honey. <laughs> Shout out to um, Do you want, you, I know you mentioned before, but you want to have kids? I do. I actually was talking about this with my ex yesterday. Oh, well, that's I, interesting. Um, no, we just were having a conversation, just re getting to know each other. This is the same ex that I've been going oh. on dates with for the last couple of months. So we just was, we just be asking, like, you know, we just had like a long conversation. We was asking about our future, what do we want? And I was just saying how I do want kids. Um, I would like more than two just because I was bored and I know my kids need, I don't know, like, I really want them to, to enjoy life. And not worry that's about that's it. very I, selfless of you. You're right, though. Yeah, like I don't want I, I don't I feel bad for people that's the only child because I feel like a lot of times they don't even know how to navigate through things or even small Be stuff. Friends, is like, like sharing stuff with people because they don't have siblings like that. And I feel like that was part of my problem because even though I had a sibling, everything she had she had to give to me because I'm the baby, I'm the child. So it's like. Makes sense. You know no, you're right. There's definitely only child syndrome, and they grow up, and some some of them end up being the toxic relationship person. Girl, baby, baby, being weird. <laughs> so I just don't want to. I don't want that to happen. So I would definitely want like three or four kids. Um, I said four because there's also such thing as the middle child syndrome. Nah, true. Um, so uh, you what's know. the oldest child syndrome? Because I really sacrificed a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, we need to figure it out. I'm the youngest, obviously. But um, <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I do. I want. I want like four kids. I, I'm just gonna let life decide for me. I mean that part too, because I probably you know I'm, I, I life can decide for me too. But I do. I genuinely want like four kids. I do. Yeah, you're right though. I do feel like if I have a kid though, I need to go ahead and have another one. Like let's not even play this game. My child not about to be by themselves. And you know. I, two like, is actually a good number too. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Nine is also a good number. But are we talking about kids? Yeah. We're no, talking okay. about kids. I mean, like two kids. When? Okay. So, what do you think? Like, I think for me, at least, given my acknowledgement of the relationships I've had with my parents, like I know the kind of parent I think I want to be. Mm-hmm. And I just think I want to be. I want to teach. I just want to. I really love putting people on to like life hacks. I want my children. I know. And the thing is, what's so funny, I might have this plan, but when I actually have kids, when they get old, they're going to be like, my mama never did this and never did this. I think it's just no way to get around it. But I really want my child to get, grow up and appreciate everything I taught them on how to navigate life, just not have to worry about like financial stability, even if I don't have a lot of money to leave for them. But I just don't want them to like be in the situation that I was in, even though I had access to parents. I just want them to, I just want them to be prepared for life. And I mean, even when it comes to college, oh my God, I didn't even know who to go to for college, which is one of the reasons why I wasn't enrolled in college when I graduated from high school. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I'm just like, you know. Honestly, I honestly just went to Barter just to go. And I went because you went. And now look at us. 
<laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, I'm going to college. But yeah, I just was so lost, man. And I even the debt I came, it's just so many things that I just think I was ill prepared for. But and that's not even to blame people because I'm obviously my mother did the best she could. And I don't, I mean, I guess my dad did the best he could. I don't know. But I just think that I want to, I think that I have made myself intentionally so informed on things in general that I hope yeah. that I am able to communicate that with my children. And that's what I try to do for my little cousins now. And when my niece and nephews get old enough, I'm going to do the same thing for them. I really want to put them on in every aspect of life. Yeah, I think for me, I just um, focus more so on doing what's best for me and not beating myself up for every little thing that goes wrong or that I don't do that. I I think that I grew up um, with an audience and my audience being my family and they always looked at me to be like the perfect, the golden child, like. I had really big shoes to fill just because my mom wanted to me wanted me to be a freaking entertainer. And then of course she would tell everybody that. So everybody would be on me about it. Dance and, boy. Yeah, it was the, it was like stuff like that. And I'm just like, I'm shy as fuck. Oh, that's tough, yeah. That's awkward. So, you know, I always I grew up just almost like not trying to make mistakes at all. So now I have to get comfortable with not being a hundred percent right all the time and also just able to just not beat myself up when i'm not doing right you know oh so, my god you that's me i beat myself up so much when i do something wrong but it was just out yeah. of fear like it's not it's some fear that was built in from growing up doing stuff wrong and i now it'd be like i'd be scared to do everything and it's oh my god it's it's really something i'm trying to get out of but it's gonna take time jesus mm. it's all gucci though mm. well i think this is a good conversation no, it really was. It actually um, was a good release as well. So maybe this was also almost like Amen. therapy. Amen. Was not not a replacement for therapy, but a good a good um, accessory. Yeah. Oh, you know. I want to eventually go to therapy um, with. I, I don't know about my my mother. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't even know what's gonna happen with my dad. Honestly, I think my me and my dad are fine now. I mean, everything I wanted to express, I've expressed, and he has reaffirmed. But I think that. Um, in my relationship, I want us to go to therapy before, I mean, especially before we get married, but I just want to be able to just get everything out that might be something that could come up when I start sharing our roof with another human being. And, you know, so we can just heal those wounds before they accumulate. (laughs) Per But all right. Well, thank you all for listening. I think this was a good episode. Thank you, Draco, for suggesting this topic. I think there's so much more. I genuinely want to do an episode like this with my sister. Maybe you could do one with your sister. That'd be cool. What if we do uh, with our own families? Like interviews. Okay. That might might help the conversation. Yeah. All four of us can be on Zoom at the same time. Or you can do yours with your sister and I can do because I don't feel like we can really have the conversation if we have everybody in on it. You know what I'm saying? That is true. Maybe we'll do that around the holidays. Okay. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening to the uh we about to be up on 90 episodes. Let's see, honey. Thank you guys for listening to the 88th episode of OD Podcast. Don't forget to go to audibletrial.com slash OD Podcast for a free audiobook and 30-day trial. There we go. Purr. Purr. Right, Bye.